worship you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, it's great to be here. Welcome uh, to Harmony Presbyterian Church. Uh, welcome uh, here in the pews, uh, in at home, and in the future. They're, they're working on getting that volume there. Uh, it's a great day to be here. Today is the uh, 12th of June in our liturgical calendar. It is Trinity Sunday. Last week we had uh, Pentecost Sunday. We were all wearing red, and this Sunday we'll talk about what it means uh, to really understand the fullness of the Godhead, so we'll be talking about uh, that today. Are there any announcements in the life of the church for things going on? Last week, uh, the deacons met. Uh, I think a couple weeks the session will meet. Yeah. Yeah, just real quick. We are ready to build, build the wall out front, so if any of you have a desire to be part of that project, uh, seek afterwards, especially if you have extra Great. The other items. It'll be nice and warm today. Good to worship. Good to be here. All right. Well, let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this day and for this time to come together. 
to worship you in your fullness, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We approach you humbly as you have welcomed and invited us, and we gather in your presence. We love you, and we are grateful for your love of us. Amen. Would you please uh, join as we sing our opening hymn, Come Thou Almighty King, number uh, two. Oh, it's, it's getting there. It's getting there. Okay, please rise as you're able. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Know that and be at peace. The peace of Christ be with us all. Amen. You may uh, be seated. We've got a time to uh, consider the items that we're praying about on the blue sheet. If you have uh, joined us in the sanctuary, if you're at home and would like to text in, the telephone number is 970 226-0603. I think you can text in to that. Uh, There's one that we've received as a text in from uh, Lena, her uh, friend Connie, um, a different Connie than this one, uh, is needing some prayer for uh, surgery and some healing. So be sure to add that. Other joys or concerns? Yeah, joys. Connie. Um, Karen, my friend's mom that we've prayed for before, 
Lord passed away yesterday morning. So prayers for my friend Lori and the family and, and me. Mm -hmm. For for the friends and family of Karen who passed away, uh, Connie's friend Lori's mother. Others, yeah, Barb. Um, so prayers for Donna and my grandson because they are going to induce on either Friday or Saturday. So the next time you all see me, I will be a grandmother. Well, so Donna and grandson, uh, Friday or Saturday? This Friday week? or Saturday. They're going to finalize it. It's literally is there a room in the inn. So it's either going to be Friday or Saturday. The hospital inn. Yes. Yes, the um, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, Either way, there may not be room. The um, uh, well, that would seem like a wonderful Father's Day gift. Oh, well, yes, that, I didn't, yeah. coming right up, man, yes. man. Yes. That's just getting up right under the wire. <laughs> um, wow. Okay, very excited. Pray for Donner and and for the whole family and the grandson. Yes, others. Let's keep an attitude of prayer as so we may have other things on our hearts and our minds and we join together to offer prayer for these and for these items in our community and uh, church family. Lord, we thank you so much for the way that you listen to us, that you hear us, you invite us to into your presence to spend time with you. We thank you for this day, uh, the sunshine, the way that the plants are just in full bloom and growing. We uh, praise you even for the heat as it produces crops that nourish uh, our bodies, and we, we thank you for that. We think of these many people that you've placed in our lives, uh, family members, friends, uh, neighbors, and co-workers that, that we are uh, in relationship with and care for. We pray that you would strengthen our relationships as we've asked before, just the same way that you are in relationship three in one. We pray that you would bind us together in unity. We continue to pray for Larry and Carla. We pray for uh, continued um, vitality and health, and we pray for a healing, healing. for um, Chris and Connie's grandson. We ask that you would continue to be uh, with the entire family in that. Uh, we are grateful for the, the uh, Connie's uh, family that has traveled and has been here. We remember uh, those friends and family left behind by Karen, uh, especially reach out uh, to Lori and, and to Connie as she uh, offers comfort and support in that situation. We are grateful for um, the safe arrival of, of Steve and Paul and the whole uh, crowd in Africa, and we ask that you would continue to bless their time there and keep them well and safe, and we continue to pray for Moose and Paula as there is continued improvement uh, following the stroke. We remember Jason, uh, cousin's son of Nancy. We ask that you would continue to um, heal him and um, strengthen him. We ask for safe travels for those that are traveling about the country, uh, all those that are tending to uh, vacations and things of that sort. <coughs> as well as just being with those that are at home, perhaps, uh, looking for things to do and, and needing to stay safe and well. We are grateful for Cam's recovery thus far and pray for continued healing uh, for her, and we ask that you would be with both Jay and Cam. We are grateful for Larry's healing, uh, and we pray that you continue to strengthen him. We thank you for the time uh, during the summer and for the extra programs that are available uh, for, for students needing uh, uh, encouragement and head starts and continued support. We pray for those, uh, especially that are on majors route, that you would be with them. For Doug, who is battling cancer uh, and possible liver failure, we pray for him. We keep in mind uh, Lena's friend Connie uh, and the surgery that she requires and the healing that she desires. Uh, we pray that you would be with her. As 
There was a fatal accident this morning in Fort Collins. We pray for all those that tended to that, the first responders, the neighbors, the, those that were witnesses, and uh, to the family and friends of, of the deceased. We pray for that circumstance. We are grateful for the moisture that we receive, and we pray continually for uh, adequate rain to uh, help help crops to grow and help fires to be um, avoided. We continue to pray for this. We think about the way that the building is used during the week. Uh, each day, at different times, we are grateful um, for uh, the opportunity to be host and hospitable to others. We, we pray that you would be with those that are tending to uh, groups that need help from recovery, from addiction, for those that are groups that build community. Uh, we are grateful for that and for those that uh, build uh, young men and women as they train them up in different skills. We are grateful for that as well. We pray that as we've gathered here, you would remind us of the ways that you are calling us to health. Uh, we are grateful for the provisions for those in uh, assisted care and other skilled nursing facilities. We pray that you would be with those, especially those that we remember um, among us. And we pray that you would be equipping those uh, in the caretaking fields industry. We pray for the health of our country and for kindness to prevail. We pray that neighbors would be strengthened and relationships would uh, grow. We pray amongst our own church community that you would keep us healthy and we ask that you would help us to seek truth and wisdom, high esteem and public discourse. Pray for those. We pray for those that are oppressed and marginalized, discriminated against, and we ask that justice would be done. We pray for all of this in Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I have received a text that says that there is organ music playing over the audio. I don't know if this is still accurate or not, um, but if it is at home, let us know that, and um, we, will, we will look into that. So thank you for that uh, musical bed. Uh, while we are playing. Today's scripture reading is from John 16, verses 12 through 15. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, we thank you for this day, for this time. We ask that you would... Uh, Add to us understanding and wisdom as we consider this text and as we meditate on who you are as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray, amen. Some people memorize the verse, uh, Jesus wept. It's the shortest verse in the Bible, and, and that's one. This one that we lead off, if we were going to take it out of context, this is the pastor's verse. I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear. Um, uh, that, is, that is when I go into overtime. You can remember that in the future. We hopefully won't go into overtime today, although we have a great topic of conversation to consider a little bit, a little bit different than our, our other Sundays as we think of what it means to be uh, worshiping uh, the triune God. 
Let me check this out and make sure that we have lost our music here. This is our at-home folks keeping us um, in the mix. I think it, this is not necessarily good news. Let's see. I saw that text. Hmm. Kind of choppy, keeps spinning. Where is the organ music coming from? Keeps cutting service off. Okay, I'll pass that along. I'm trusting that there is some thing going on over there. So, well, let's see what. Well, well, seems like there is a lot of issues with the YouTube or on your side. With these are different people, by the way. There's also organ music. In, okay, so everybody's got organ music. Um, maybe we should, the, the solution is to bring the organ music into us and then we can all be unified. Um, we, will, we will handle that. Um, everybody please turn off their phones? Well, or, you, yeah, if you're not using... just turn off your Wi-Fi. Yeah, that, we'll see if that... <laughs> This is like, I'm going to just tell you a couple of human things. Does it concern anybody else? I think I've asked you this concern. If you're ever traveling on a big commercial airline and there's not enough people and they say you need to spread out a little bit, have you ever had that? I've never wondered like, man, is we, are we really going to like tilt this way if we're all like on one side? Because if, if you've been in any other sort of situation where we're like, you know, like everybody gets on one side of the van or something, the church van's going to tip over. But um, here we're working on making sure there's enough power uh, to go through to um, get to our friends at home. So, please, no, no one uh, watching Joel Osteen while we're doing this, all right? No streaming out there. All right. Again, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. This Sunday marks the celebration of the Trinity, and I decided to wear uh, our um, Presbyterian stole here. I shared with some people, repeat for you, uh, you know, there's a lot of imagery in this uh, logo, and uh, one of them is kind of Trinitarian. There's some images. You can Google this later and figure out what it is, but uh, there's presence of uh, cross here and then the flames with God, and there's kind of this triangle shape, and one of the things, the boys and I were uh, participating in a vacation Bible school this past week at the First United Methodist Church. Anybody been over there at the church? It's a very unique shaped church. I mean, I've been in a lot of different churches. This is the one, they've got really triangle themes like all over the place uh, and, and kind of mountains. And so we were talking about church architecture and before the service here, I was talking to my boys and they noticed, I had not noticed this. I'm going to give them credit uh, in the sermon. I had not noticed how triangular, I mean, I had sort of noticed, but not really thought, you know, church architecture uh, ties into things. Have you see the wall, wall, and essentially a wall back there that you're worshiping in a very triangular, very Trinitarian kind of uh, thought. Not only that, again, I was not on the building committee. I could be just reading into it. Maybe you all know. But if you look up to the ceiling, you also see that there's three panels, kind of this sort of three theme. Uh, if you extend it to the sides, we have three windows on each side. Now that totals six. But then there's also this kind of seventh window that You've got both a three and a seven. Uh, seven is kind of a, we're doing church architecture here as well, um, concept. And I believe, I think some may disagree with me, but I believe that there's two pews that have been removed from the front of the sanctuary, which if we add, that totals, totals up to seven on each side. See, seven number of completion. So there's a lot of, we're surrounded by these images uh, that are to evoke this, this concept of holiness and of God. And, uh, you know, we don't even always notice them. Um, so they are there. Is there still organ music going on? No? no? All right, good. Uh, this is Trinity Sunday, and this is where as Presbyterians, as those who uh, call themselves Christians, identify that we depart um, from other faiths that may also affirm monotheism. Uh, that is the belief that there's only one God, and so we're a little bit different in this case. We believe not that there's three gods, but that there is this unique aspect about the monotheistic God that we affirm that is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's a little bit difficult to explain. Analogies in the church are widespread, 
And if you can assume that it's an analogy, you can just about assume that there's some sort of heresy within that analogy. Uh, uh, analogy. That is, I'm someone who likes to give analogies in just almost all aspects of my life. I say, oh, it's just like this. I just did it with the service, and I said, it's like an airplane. I compare things. But when we're talking about the Trinity, it's really kind of a one-of-a-kind sort of situation. And what happens as people start to share and express that, we might get close, but we hit upon ways that it's not just quite uh, right. And if you want to soften that word heresy to say, hey, that's just not quite right, you're free to do so. But I'm going to just highlight a couple of ways that people over the course of church history have sort of misunderstood or misproclaimed what it is that is the Trinity. And if we understand in a friendly way kind of how that's not exactly right, you say that's not exactly right, that's not exactly right, then we sort of have a better image of what is right, though we cannot fully express it. Everybody with me so far? Modalism. You guys know modalism? Modalism is a heresy uh, where people try to explain uh, the Trinity as one God, but just different modes or different forms. For example, like there's God, and then there's just this new and improved God, you know, first a sort of this omnipresent being, and then uh, God turns into this uh, uh, man, Jesus, and then uh, turns into this Holy Spirit. The trouble with that is you end up with one God, which is good, but there's not really great scriptural reconciliation with the times that God is co-present. Um, an example is the baptism of Jesus, where there is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or even, in fact, the, the call to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Modalism analogies, we may have used these, no guilt uh, assigned, is when people describe God as like how one man, me, can be a father, a son, and an uncle all at the same time. But that's really just one person. That's not the three persons of the Trinity. Or people may have uh, used the modalism, if you have water, ice, and steam, you have uh, you know, puddles going on, you've got different things. It's not one uh, substance. We can readily get behind these analogies as they seem to simplify a complex concept, but unfortunately that leaves us sort of in this um, heretical camp. That means just not teaching the right teaching. Another route that people have gone, and this you may have friends or family who uh, have come to this conclusion, we're not picking on them, we're just sharing this, is Arianism. So we had modalism, Arianism, named after Arius in the church, who was condemned by the Council of Nicaea in 325. Arius suggested that in order to reconcile this, that, that Jesus was just not quite fully God, right? That we believe God, uh, Jesus to be fully divine, but Arius would suggest that there was a time when Jesus didn't exist. It was like God, and then Jesus came. Jesus isn't totally God, this is what the teaching would be, but just sort of partially God. Pretty good, very helpful. Uh, it's pretty easy to see that this would not be right, but it is a popular explanation from people in other faiths as they approach what it means to be Christian, is they say, well, we like what your teaching is, but we don't really affirm that Jesus is divine. Maybe a good teacher or possibly uh, a, a wonderful prophet, uh, but not fully God. It's where if we have family members or, or um, uh, neighbors or other folks, Muslim neighbors, Jewish friends, they may come out and kind of say, well, it's kind of nice that you've got this Jesus, but certainly couldn't be God. Difference, right? So we've got Trinity. Modalism, Arianism, and then the, the, the final kind of heresy that comes out there, uh, maybe not so much, is just labeling us as a polytheistic uh, religion. Uh, there's, there's three gods. You guys just, that's fine, cool. You know, the Greeks had their gods and the Romans had their gods and, and you all have three. The analogy that sometimes people use for that is like, a, like an egg. 
you know, an egg's got like this white and the yolk and the eggshell. So oh, it's kind of three in one. Well, it's all different substances, see? If you've ever tried cooking, have you ever substituted like eggshell for egg white in a recipe? Not intentionally anyway. You, you find that eggshells in the batter is not really especially uh, good. You don't sit down and eat that. And so the substance is not the same. So we have the Trinity, uh, and we're working on what it is not. We're kind of trying to figure out what it is. Stick with me. I'd like to offer a uh, selection from the Athanasian Creed. Uh, it's a creed that's named after uh, Athanasius uh, in the 2nd and 3rd century AD. Uh, and he was kind of a, a champion against the Arian attacks on the doctrine of the Trinity. Uh, he did not write the creed, but it's kind of attributed to him. And this is what uh, is affirmed in that creed. That we worship one God in unity, that we worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity, neither blending their persons nor dividing their essence. For the person of the Father is a distinct person, the person of the Son is another, and that of the Holy Spirit is still another. But the divinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one. They're co-equal, their majesty co-eternal. As we consider the Trinity and the orthodoxy of our faith as Trinitarian, we find that we are in fact not the same with just about all other religions. We're not the same. We are unique. Um, it's a unique distinction of who we are as uh, the Christian church. From our own book of confessions, the second Helvetic confession addresses the issue. First, God is one. And this is the text here. We believe and teach that God is one in essence or nature, subsisting in himself, all sufficient in himself, invisible, incorporeal, immense, eternal, creator of all things, both visible and invisible, the greatest good, living, quickening, and preserving all things, omnipotent and supremely wise, kind and merciful, just and true. That is the one God. And then in the language of the creed, they write in different terms than we would say. We say, truly we detest many gods because it's expressly written and they provide scriptural uh, support for this. In Deuteronomy 6, 4, the Lord your God is one Lord. In Exodus chapter 20, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. And in Isaiah 45, I am the Lord and there is no other gods besides me. Am I not the Lord and there is no other God beside me? A righteous God and a Savior, there is none besides me. So clearly our, our faith teaches that God is one. And we say that's great. But then the, the um, creed continues, says God is three. Notwithstanding, we believe and teach that the same immense, one, and indivisible God is in person inseparably and without confusion to be distinguished as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, as the Father has begotten the Son from eternity, the Son is begotten by an ineffable generation, and the Holy Spirit truly proceeds from them both and the same from eternity, and is to be worshipped with both. And so we have this kind of concept. The best thing that we kind of think of is how, you know, a triangle is kind of there, but that's not exactly right either. Uh, but they're not three gods, but three persons of the same substance, of the same existing time, co-eternal, and of the same power structure, co-equal, For according to the nature or essence, they are so joined together that they are one God, and the divine nature is common to the Father and the Holy Spirit and the Son. And so we affirm things like the Apostles' Creed, which teaches us uh, these three elements. Now, after all that background, we have this 
scripture text from John, which is just a short little scripture text from John chapter 16, uh, verses 12 through 15. I have much more to say to you, Jesus says, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. We see this theme as we recognize uh, God as this community, um, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus does not necessarily function independently from them. Holy Spirit doesn't. When Jesus is telling his disciples, I've got more to share with you now, more than you can bear, some scholars have suggested that's even talking about the crucifixion and what's going to happen there. But that the Holy Spirit will be present uh, and will guide you into uh, all truth. He will not speak on his own. Verse 14, he will glorify me, that is Jesus, because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. And then kind of in this sort of following this path around, we recognize that Jesus proclaims in verse 15, all that belongs to the Father is mine. There's this whole connection, interconnectedness between the three persons of the Trinity. What we have is not necessarily something, um, again, that's easy to grasp, though it is theologically present in the Scripture. In other words, we don't see a lot of bumper stickers on the back of station wagons, if people still drive those. I have one. Um, that says, the Trinity is my co-pilot, right? There's not that kind of uh, bumper sticker nuance to the Trinity. However, it's important for us to realize, that though it's easy to kind of drift off, there's some Presbyterian articles on the denominational page, say we kind of... Uh, drift off into Unitarianism, sort of just God is everything, uh, there's, there's more breadth to our um, theology. There's more breadth to us as uh, Presbyterians that we have uh, this complex religious belief. It's not easy, it's, it's mysterious. One of the things that I've experienced in my own life, and from time to time, I'm guilty of it doing as well, is we try to explain everything away. We want to distill it into the most simple terms, but not everything in the world is really designed to be simple. You know, if you go to YouTube, you'll find an answer to nearly every human problem that's out there, or some attempt at solving that. We live in an information age it's an understanding age. We have this desire to fully comprehend, fully explain, fully be able to make a YouTube video out of everything. But we wonder in that mysterious way, is, is it possible that there are some things that are just really not expressible in words? Jesus talks about the, the Holy Spirit uh, utters uh, when... when it's too deep to pray. We've got these expressions where we just kind of allow God to help us in our prayers. Are there times when we can just not express things? We want to know, how is this so? Or how did such and such happen? How is it that this is the way that things worked out? Pose the question, can we receive truth without understanding it? Or can we receive truth without being able to necessarily explain it in our own terms? I wonder, is it possible to be amongst the world's best thinkers and reason seekers and yet still allow some things to be mysterious? Each week we gather together, we come back to find more answers and uh, more solutions to, to our life and to the world. Perhaps there's a place, in addition to that, we like answers to consider more questions, to think about, well, how does that work? But leave it open-ended. I find personally that the process of uh, not solving every aspect of the Trinity is challenging. If I had my preference, I would be able to share you a cute little ice cube 
or a three-leaf clover or an egg, but none of those fully express who God is. We are led into this journey of discovering the truth. And maybe that teaches more about who God is. It's this journey that invites us to consider the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to consider the Holy Spirit, that points to the way that the disciples engage in these three persons of the Trinity. Is it possible that the mystery of the Trinity is left somewhat unsatisfactorily open so that we are reminded of our own humanity and not divinity, in that we can't possibly understand everything about God. If we did, wouldn't, wouldn't we be divine? Is it possible for some things to exist without a firm grasp on why it is a certain way? You know, we encounter this in other aspects of our life, maybe not theological. In the past weeks, we've asked questions about situations of human violence and mental illness, about global pandemics, and we may wonder about life and death in our own circles, people that we wonder, why did they have to pass away? Why did they live? It's important that every challenge, is it important then to us that every challenge have a fundamentally black and white answer, or is there a way that we can embrace the journey of exploration. Embrace the journey of Jesus leading us in the way, having not yet arrived. As we go from here today, we ask the question, is it possible to allow God to work um, and be present with us and for us, and for us to worship God, to worship God sincerely without fully comprehending or being able to express everything that God is. I trust that that is the case, that as we go from here, we will continue to wrestle with the concept of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three in one. We will continue to uphold our faith, and we will continue to grow into where God is leading us. Let us join together in prayer. God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the opportunity to uh, embrace you in your diversity, in your distinctness, in your unity, in your completeness. We pray that you would help us to understand who you are, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please rise as you are able and uh, affirm our faith uh, this selection is from the Second Helvetic Confession, Chapter 3. Let us join together. We believe and teach that the same immense, one and invisible God is in person inseparably and without confusion distinguished as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, as the Father has begotten the Son from eternity, the Son is begotten by an ineffable generation, and the Holy Spirit truly proceeds from them both, and the same from eternity, and is so to be worshipped with both. Thus, there are not three gods, but three persons, consubstantial, co-eternal, and co-equal, distinct with respect to hypostases and with respect to order, the one preceding the other, yet without any inequality. For according to the nature and essence, they are so joined together that they are one God, and the divine nature is common to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray, uh, let us sing rather, uh, number 279, Come Holy Spirit, Heavenly Dove.
And now, go from this place, encouraged to love and serve the Lord. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Alleluia. Amen. There's no set time at which we end. I could say more things to you if you wish, but we've got a couple minutes before the hour, so please stay around, visit with one another, affirm one another in Christian faith, and uh, uh, have a time of fellowship together. Good to see you.